question three of the main June 2014 exam. How long will it take you to save? So they're asking us how long. That's what we're going to have to calculate. How long will it take you to save 4,000 Rand for a new phone if you deposit 100 Rand at the end of every month? The end of every month. So see, it's a regular payment you're making. And the end of the month, that's very important. So we know because it's not at the beginning, because it's at the end that we're dealing with an ordinary annuity. Ordinary annuity. Okay, so 100 Rand at the end of every month into a savings account which pays 9% per annum compounded monthly. Answers are given to the nearest month. So they want to know how long to the nearest month. Now, what we're dealing with here is an annuity. So that's kind of our key idea, even though we don't see the word annuity. We know because we're making regular payments at the end of every month that it is an ordinary annuity. And we're going to round our answer to the nearest month. When we get to an annuity, it is quite helpful to visualize using a um, timeline. So let's see, do our timeline here. There we go. All right, so we start now. And things happen every month. So we've got now, then we've got in one month time. So we've got month one. Then we've got in two months time. We've got month two. Now we don't know how many months. So we're gonna just call that in, month in. That's our number of months in our formula. Now we know at the end of every month, we are going to deposit 100 Rand. So this is now, at the end of month, the first month, we're going to deposit 100 Rand. At the end of the second month, another 100 Rand, etc. All the way until the end of the last month, we're going to deposit 100 Rand. And we know that after that, we get out 4,000. Let's have a look at our interest rate. For that whole time, our interest rate doesn't change. We're dealing with an interest rate of 9% per annum. Write it as a decimal, so divide it by 100 to get 0 0,09. It's compounded monthly, which is 12 times a year. So we've got to divide by 12. Now we know that we're dealing with an ordinary annuity. So let's go to our formula sheet and find that formula. There's the notation for an ordinary annuity. It's important to be familiar with the notation, but actually we don't want to deal with the notation. We want the formula. So there is your formula for a normal annuity. S being the amount of money you have at the end, R being the amount of money you have at the beginning, I being your interest rate, but remember that you have to have divided it by the number of times that it's compounded in that year. Your N is your number of Payments. So in this case, it's going to be the number of months, and there's your I again. Right, so let's make a list of all our variables before we pop them in the formula. We know we're going to need S, which is the amount at the end, which is 4,000. We've got our R. Oh, and I realize I just referred to it as the amount at the beginning, but actually that was a, mis that was a mistake. That's usually our P. The R is our regular payment, and we have regular payments of... 100 Rand. Our I is our interest rate divided by 12 and N is how many months we're going to have. We don't know, so we don't know how many months. That's what we want to calculate. Let's write down our formula before we sub in. So the formula we're dealing with is S equals R open brackets, 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 over i. Sub in what you got. We know our s is 4,000. We know our r is 100. Then we've got 1 plus 0, 0,09 over 12. 
to the power of n that we don't know it, so we just call it n minus 1 over your i. Don't forget to write it as a decimal and divide by 12. Now we're going to start manipulating this equation in order to get to n. Be very careful of the order that you actually manipulate an equation in. Firstly, we get rid of whatever's outside the brackets. So the, the 100 is times by that whole story, so we divide. So we're going to go 4,000 divided by 100, and we get 40. So 40 is equal to, now that whole story there, so it's equal to 1 plus 0, 0,09 over 12 to the power of n minus 1 over 0, 0,09 over 12. Now the next thing we need to do, we can't get to that numerator yet until we get rid of the denominator. So it's divided by that, so we're going to go 40 multiplied by 0, 0,09 over 12 to get the numerator on its own. And if you do that on your calculator, you get 0, 0,3. It's a nice decimal, but if it is a longer one, don't round off yet. So that is equal to... 1 plus 0, 0, 0,09 over 12 to the power of n minus 1. We're getting closer and closer to that n. Now we need to get rid of that negative 1. So the opposite of minusing 1 is we add 1, but we've got to do it to both sides. So we add 1 to get rid of it on the side. We add 1 to 0, 0,3 and we get 1, 3. And that's equal to 1 plus 0, 0,09 over 12 to the power of n. Now at this point, it's, it's probably going to be quite easy to actually just work that out on your calculator. So I'm just going to take that out and rather just work it out. Just take that out. So that's actually equivalent to 1, 0, 0, 7, 5 to the power of n. Again, don't round off at all along the way. Now when you get to this point where you have just a power on the side, so you have a number raised to the power of n, this is where you need to introduce lin to both sides so that we can use what's called our power rule and that n can come to the front. So we're going to introduce lin to both sides of our equation. There we go. So that this n, it's, it's, an, it's a rule that works mathematically. I'm not going to go into the proof at this point. You just need to, you need to have some faith. You need to believe me that that n can come to the front. So here I've got lin 1.3 is equal to n lin 1, 0, 0, 7, 5. The reason why we do that is now we can divide both sides by this, by lin 1, 0, 0, 7, 5, to get n on its own. So n is equal to lin 1, 3, divided by lin 1, 0, 0, 7, 5, can't do it on a normal calculator, but you can do it on a scientific or a financial calculator. Just make sure that you're using your divide sign correctly. In a scientific calculator, you can type it in as you see it. In a financial calculator, it's going to be that divided by that. And you might need brackets around the 1, 3 and 1, 0, 0, 7, 5, depending on the calculator you're using. You would get 35, 1, 1, 2, 9, and it carries on, depending on what you rounded your calculator off to. But remember, the question said that we need to round off to the nearest month. So 35 point something, something, something is closest to 35. So it's approximately equal to 35 months. So we go back and we see if we've got that as one of our options. There we go, option number two, 35 months. Now you might be thinking, sure, there's a lot of calculation steps involved when you're trying to calculate n. And you are right. It is quite a long, time-consuming calculation. And even though if you get good at it, you don't need to show every step, it does take a while. Now, because this is an annuity, you can use the finance mode on your calculator. 
So let's see, and that's much quicker. Even if you're doing that, I recommend that you just write a list of what these are and what you'll be putting in your calculator so that you don't make any silly mistakes. Again, please just pause the video when we get to the calculator that you use and the method that you use. So if you've chosen to use the recommended method of setting one payment per period always and using a sharp, then these are the keys you would push to get to your answer. So pause the video at this point and have a look. If, however, you are using a sharp, but you manually change your payments per period, so for example, you change them to 12, then this is the time where you need to pause the video and have a look at your keys. If you're using an HP, set at one payment per period always. Pause the video at this point and have a look at the keys you would need to push on your calculator and the display that you would get. And if you are using an HP but you manually change the period for each question, for example you would change it to 12, then you can pause at this point and have a look at the keys and the displays that you would get.